Hey, what's up YouTube? It's Tony R. Sanders here, the owner of Gallo. Gallo is a company where we do leadership and development training for organizations. We help them with manager training, career development plans, um, a bunch of other training things that we do inside of organizations. But here on YouTube, what we do is we help you become a learner so that you can earn. You have to learn before you earn. And so I'm excited to bring all of my years of experience in the training and professional development world to YouTube to give it to you for free. What I would charge your company for undisclosed amounts. We're not even going to talk about that. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about a topic that's really near and dear to my heart. It's about making a career change. Um, if you know anything about working, you know that the right job and the wrong job, the difference between those two could change your entire life. Think about having a bad job. If you have a bad job, Everything in your life seems to be bad at some times, right? You, you, you hate going to work. You get that Sunday night gut feeling like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I have to wake up and do this again. Uh, normally, you either are not making enough money or the money that you're making, you're not able to enjoy it because you're miserable five out of the seven days a week, right? You get treated poorly. You wake up tired. You go to bed tired. You rarely, rarely have time for your family and for your friends to really have good quality relationships, right? That's something that we're going to talk about later because being, being truly wealthy doesn't just stop at your pocket. It expands to your entire life. So we'll talk about that in the future. Uh, on the other hand, when you have that good job, when you have that job that's working for you, the career path that you feel like you should be on, you feel fulfilled, you feel passion, you get excited on Mondays to work, wake up and go do what you have to do. Uh, your whole life is enriched. You have time for family. You have time for friends. You have time to do the things that you love because you're not being weighed down by a job. You're actually being uplifted and empowered by a job. So how do we do that career change? Well, I want to give you three things that you're going to need if you ever think about changing careers. Now, there's some people that are still kind of on the fence watching this video, and there are some people that search for this on YouTube because they're ready to make the jump right now. They need some help. So I'm here to help you guys. So let's talk about career change. Now, I'm going to write this up here for you. And I did not get the dry erase board with spell check on it. So if I write something wrong, if I spell something wrong, uh, and you recognize that I spell it wrong, that means you know how to spell it right, so you don't need my help with that. <laughs> Let's talk about career changes. There's three things that you're going to need in order to make a proper career change or a career transition. Here's the number one thing. Number one, you need experimental experience. I'll break down what that means. Experimental experience. I think I got that right. If I don't, you Google it, All right? <laughs> uh, experimental experience. One of the things about change is change in and of itself is a, is a difficult thing to manage for a lot of people. Now, some of you, like me, love change. They look for change. They're always changing. But for other people, especially if you've been in one career for a long time, you probably don't have a lot of experience experimenting with new things and trying to change. And so what you need to do is develop some experimental experience. You need to be unafraid to try new things. That's another way of saying that. You need to be unafraid to try new things. Sometimes you need to go and do something crazy so that the crazy thing that you were trying to do doesn't seem so crazy. I'll give you an example. When I made my career transition 10 years ago, I found the perfect job for me at that time. It was wonderful. It allowed me to do what I loved every day. I enjoyed every single second of it. But at a certain time, it was time for me to leave that place. And I knew that it was time for me to leave. But it was crazy to think about that. I had made more money than I ever made in my life. My family, my relationships, my, my, my close friends, all more enriched because I was at working at this job, right? And had these opportunities. And now I'm thinking about leaving that. That sounds crazy, right? Well, guess what sounds crazier than that? Jumping out of an airplane. <laughs> That's exactly what I did. I'm not kidding. I don't recommend this. Don't say this dude on Tony, you know, this Tony dude on YouTube. He told me to jump out of a plane. I'm not saying to do this, even though it was really fun. But I went to Hawaii and literally jumped out of an airplane, which was way crazier than leaving, leaving my job. But here's the funny thing. By the time my feet hit the ground and I kind of got my, my balance back, right, and I was celebrating, I started to think about leaving my job. And guess what? It wasn't that crazy no more. Because I'm like, okay, what I just did was way crazier than me going to find another place to work. I can go find another place to work. I can't get a new life if this goes wrong, right? So... You need experience experimenting with new things. 
Sometimes that can look like starting a side hustle. Maybe you want to do a career transition from this industry to that industry. Maybe you can go start a side hustle or do a volunteer role in that industry just to get you comfortable. Here's another thing experimental experience does. It gets you comfortable with change. It also teaches you about what you like. Sometimes people haven't experimented enough with different things in their lives that they don't really know what they like. Sometimes there's different things that you like, but once you get deeper into it, there's elements that you don't like. I'll give you another quick example, then we'll move on to number two. Uh, I used to love creating music, especially when I was younger. I would sing, I would rap, I would make beats, all these other things. Once I start getting paid to do those things, I started to like it a little less. I like to be able to create freely without all these things blocking my mind. I didn't want to write a song thinking I got to make money off this song because it's how I'm going to feed my family. I learned that through experimental experience. I went out and experimented. I made some money you know, selling CDs, selling shows, different things like that. I started to realize I like music, but I don't like the music business. And so I need to, I need to disassociate my income from music because I don't like that. I would have never got there without experimental experience. Here's the second thing that you need. The second thing you need to know is you need to learn how you learn. What's the best way for you to learn? Uh, do you prefer a physical book like this? Okay. Or can you listen to the audio book and it's the same? Do you need both? Do you listen to the audio book while reading the physical book because it helps you connect learning more? Um, how do you learn best? In my experience doing training, uh, there are different styles of learning. They would say, you know, you have your, your visual people and your auditory people and kinesthetic people. Here's my experience. Experience is the best teacher. A lot of times, most people need all of those things, right? We have to engage them visually. We have to engage the auditory learners. We have to engage the kinesthetic learners. We have to do all three at once. Experience will be your best teacher, right? If you want to learn how to uh, start a cleaning company. The best way to learn how to do that is to start a cleaning company. If you want to run marketing campaigns, right, and you want to make that your career change or your transition, the best way to learn how to do that is to go do that thing. While you're doing that thing, examine which parts help you learn faster. Do you learn better sitting next to a buddy and that buddy showing you how to do it and you doing it and them giving you feedback? Is that the way that you learn? Do you learn best doing an online course and you're watching it and you can just go do that thing? You have to learn how you learn. Here's the thing. Learning is the biggest leverage tool you'll ever have in your career. Let me say that again. Learning is the biggest leverage tool you'll ever have in your career. My grandfather was born in the 1930s. He told me this story once. He told me that when he was a kid, he needed a job to take care of his family. So he went to the warehouse that was by his house and they were uh, shouting out jobs. Hey, we need someone who can do this. And people will raise their hand and say, I can do that. And they say, okay, you're hired. Come on in. And they say, all right, we need someone else to do this. And he said, oh, I, I know how to do this. And they hired you. Come on in, right? Well, he knew he had the ability to learn. He knew that whatever job they told him to do or he could get, he was going to have to learn anyway. And he knew how he learned. So he knew he could go do the job. So the very next job, they call, hey, we need to run some machine calling such and such. Who knows how to do that? He raised his hand and said, me. He knew from a safety perspective or whatever, they were going to teach him some things. He knew that other people were going to be running that same machine, right? It wasn't the first time they had ever made this machine. There were other people running machines. He knew all those things. Plus, he knew how he learned. So he was able to jump in and say, hey, I can do those things, right? So he was able to leverage that into career, to money for his family, food for his family, to be able to provide for his household as a kid because he learned how he learned. You need to learn how you learn. So when you get to that new place, you have to learn all these new things anyway. Isn't it better to know how you learn? And here's the third and final thing. You have to have the courage of your convictions. I think I spelled that right. You have to have the courage of your convictions. Here's what I mean by that. Change can be scary, especially when we're talking about a career change, because your job is one of those things that touch every area of your life. For most of you, your job is the reason why you can or can't go to your daughter's recital. Your job is the reason why you can or can't go to your son's football game. Your job dictates how many vacations you take, 
what type of engagement ring you can buy your wife, what type of Father's Day gift you can buy your, your husband or boyfriend or whatever the case may be, your baby daddy, right? So it touches a lot of different things. Most of our relationships outside of family stem from the work environment, from the job. So when we're talking about leaving all of that, you have to have courage to be able to do that. Listen, I worked a job that I hate. I used to work in uh, warehouses. The reason I worked in warehouses is because growing up, I saw all my uncles, they worked in warehouses. My dad worked in a warehouse. So I just thought, I guess that's the family business. I'll go work in a warehouse too. It didn't take me long to figure out that I hated it. <laughs> By the way, I was working for a, a company. Uh, I'm trying to see if I should say the name yet. Should I say the name? I worked for a company named Ford. You might have heard of this company before uh, here in Indianapolis. And I was in orientation. You know, half the day was done. And I was like, man, this is going to be a long life if I got to keep coming back to this place. <laughs> I was sick of it from day one. It didn't take me long. And I talked to one of my uncles and he said, uh, I told him I got hired there. And he said, nephew, that's a good job. You need to stay there 30, 40 years, get you a pension, retirement, your watch and all of that. Then you can go do whatever you want to do with your life. And I thought, oh my gosh, that sounds horrible. I just did one day there and I was ready to pull my eyeballs out. You're telling me I gotta do that every day for 30 or 40 years before I can go do what I wanna do with my life? That's crazy. <laughs> but I didn't have the courage to leave. I just thought, oh, well, it's, it's what daddy and them did, my uncle and them did, so I guess that's what I have to do. The thing that I do now, 10 years, you know, fast forward, I don't know anybody else that, I didn't know anybody else that did that back then. Now all my friends do this, right? I have tons of people who run businesses and work with companies and brands that if I named them, you would know them. But back then I didn't know anybody did this. So I didn't have the courage to walk away from what felt safe, what felt comfortable, even though it was painful. So you have to have the courage of your convictions to say, you know what? I'm going to choose me this time. I know this is different from what everybody in the family does, but this is what I want to do. This is what I have a passion in. This is what I want to succeed at. This is what I've experimented with and I already know that I have uh, the skills to, to get into this industry. I know how I learn, so I know that everything I need to learn, all the things that need to be added to me once I get there, I can add those things through learning because I know how to learn. And we live in the information age. There's learning all around you. You can go on TikTok and learn how to do some of the things that you want to do. And right here on YouTube, you can learn. But you got to have the courage. You got to be able to muster up the strength to jump out. When I got married, I got some great advice. Someone told me, nobody's going to lay down with your problems at night except for you and your spouse. And so because of that, you and your spouse should be the ultimate decision makers for your marriage. I'm going to tell you this. Ain't nobody going to work with you but you. Maybe you and Jesus, hopefully, but it's you. And so when it comes to making the career changes, you have to do what's best for you. Once you get this right, your family will fall in line. I have family members who tell me every chance they get now how proud of me that they are and the life that I made and all these different things. But they all remember 15 years ago when I was trying to do this, when I was making a career change, when I was jumping outside of the family business and outside of all the expectations, doing my own thing, how they were saying, hmm, I don't know if that's going to work. I don't know if you want to do that. You got to buy milk. You got daughters. You got a son. You got a wife. You got to provide for them. They don't remember that part. I remember that part. They don't remember that part. All they see now is, man, I'm so proud of you and you're doing it. And some of them be asking, how are you doing that? What do you do? Let me, let me learn what you do so I can do what you do, <laughs> right? So you got to have the courage of your conviction. So to quickly recap, uh, you got to have experimental experience. You got to be comfortable with trying new things, comfortable with change. You got to also understand the things that you like and dislike, right? What you're good at, what you're passionate about, what you're not passionate about. You got to learn how you learn. You got to understand that life is all about learning and learning is your biggest leverage tool for your career. And then number three, you got to have the courage of your convictions. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you leave a like and share it with someone else. I'm going to do another video where I get more into each one of these individually, but I don't want to make this one too long. So, uh, do that for me. Drop a comment and let me know if you're making a career change. And if so, let me know what industry you're going to jump into. Maybe you're leaving the warehouse world like I did and jumping into sales and marketing like I did. Let me know. I'll see you next time. Peace.